Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Java tutorial. So, this has been a long way to Java tutorial and the real reason is I'm not a, the biggest fan of Java. Um, yeah, and I'm not really trying to improve my skills on it either, which isn't the best thing because I need to teach people. And I'm trying to m more learn Android Java, which is slightly different, so you have different um, codes and functions, whereas this is different too. So yeah, so what we're going to do is do a couple of fixes. So first thing we're going to do is make it so the P, what we do, not only spawns here, but it spawns where our character is. So then eventually we can make our character move around. Yeah, because he can pee everywhere. And then what we're going to do is, so when we click on the P, it gets rid of it. And then eventually we can make the character walk up to it and, you know, rub it out and all that stuff. So, first thing we're going to do though is make it speed up. So when we click play, it loads, we've got to type our username, and we've got to have a password in order to click submit. So what we, instead we're going to do is directly into the text box just for testing purposes, and number four, and text here, we're going to type YouTube, which is our username, and it'll put it there. Then in the password, we're going to type, come here, password. So now, as soon as we start, we can just literally click submit, and it works. It's much easier. Submit, boom, and we log straight in, even easier. So we're going to make it, so when we get up to 100% P, it goes P, but it'll be where the character is, or maybe above the character, maybe behind, and we'll see. And then what we're going to do is make it, so when you click it, it gets rid of it, the P's gone. So then we can go up to there, and we click the toilet, it goes, you have just gone to the toilet. So it saves P, it's perfect, right? So, we're going to save the main main, main and get rid of the main menu and we need to go to here so when the P's spawn we basically need to say what happens when you click it apologies for the break there I had some unfortunate visitors so <laughs> um, by unfortunate I mean someone was knocking on the door yes unfortunate timing but what we basically need to do so when we get up to 100 toilet it spawns the P that's okay. So we need to make it basically spawn underneath the character first. So we need to spawn it at the character's exact x-axis if it's going to be behind it. Correct? That's not our character. That's not our character, yes. Okay, I've just realised. That's not our character. I've been thinking that's our character the entire time, but basically we're treating that as our character. So we need to make it spawn under this button, basically. That seems simple enough. So we're going to get the X location of it. So if we right click, uh, where's properties gone? I don't know where it's gone. But here, the location, blah, 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 where is it? Somewhere in there is location. And what we need to do is get the X location of it and then make it, I can't see it, never mind, make it spawn under it. But we need to change the Y axis, but that's it. So if we go and find where we spawn it here, P dot set location. So the X is going to be the exact same as our character, correct? So we need to get the name of our character. So button, right click, and we'll choose properties because I didn't look. And it's J button 1. Well, that's an awful name. So we're going to change it. So right click and choose change variable name. And I'm going to call it player because player is the best name in the world. There we go. So we'll go source and we'll scroll up. Here, where it says set location, we're going to type player dot get location dot x yeah that's it what's wrong with it so get locations a function um, yeah pretty easy like that all it is is it's one of these here public static void and it'll be called somewhere in j button get location and it'll have brackets so I need to put brackets on it there you'll learn all about functions shortly actually shockingly so play that get location dot x will get the x axis so horizontal copy that and paste it on the y axis and change it to y but we need to move it down so i'm actually going to put minus 15 and we'll see if that works so it should spawn at the player's exact position but minus 15 so hopefully minus is down on this because it's different with computers for example um, not everything starts at zero zero there where my mouse is. Android starts there zero zero. Some programs start up here. It's different for everything. So we'll go up to a hundred. Ooh, it's 
not working at all. I think it is moving down. I think 15 is a bit short. So we're gonna, I'm going to change. I'm going to experiment until I get it right. Then I'll be back and tell you what I... So I managed to do it and I got it as perfectly as that. Right there. And you saw that little glitch at first. If you didn't, I'll see if I can bring it up again. No, I can't. But there is a glitch I'll show you how to fix in a minute as well. But what it is, is the... Y axis actually goes down, so to plus make it go down, you need to plus it. Weirdly, it's different for everything. So change it to plus 25 if you've got the exact dimensions as me, and that's how I made mine work. So, what we now need to do is make it so when we click the P, it deletes it. So, it's different for every single thing because uh, it's different for every application. For example in C sharp it's called on click or something like that. Android it's on click. On C sharp it's I can't remember. It's been a long time. But in Java it's kind of simple but then kind of not. It's we'll do it though, you'll see. So what we basically do is when we create the button, we first need to tell it that it's something called final. Final is a weird thing because it's kind of different in two languages, but not this really. But in Android and Java, and you'll see I reference Android a lot in these tutorials because if you learn no one, you can pretty much learn the other really easily. So final basically means you cannot change the value of it. So when you create this variable p and you set it to a new j button, you can't tell it to be another j button. It's that j button forever. If you delete it, it's gone, fair play. But it's always going to be that. You can never make it a J label or another type of a button. So it's always going to be that J button. So you need to change it to final in order to make it click. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. So, before you add it to your panel and before you revalidate your form, we need to add it, the click event, above here. And we'll just do it in this gap here. Now, it's like I said, it's a little bit to get your head around at first, but then once you use it a couple of times, you'll have it in your head and you'll just be able to write it off at the top of your head. It's really simple. So, the first thing we've got to do, and I'm going to try and rush through it just so to get the tutorial under 15 minutes, is first you're going to say what you want to add it to. So, P. We're adding it to P. And we're going to type dot, and this is a long one, add action listener. Right there, it's right there. And what that'll do is create something called well, an action listener, really, it says right there. And what an action listener is, is it waits till something, you'll often hear it called events as well. Event is something like, when you click it, not event as in, you know, one of them metal things that blows air. Event, not event. Event, or action listener, whenever you say you click the button, it changes its position, it's loaded onto the form, something like that. Or an act, something's happened with the button. So basically when you click it, that's what we're going to use it for. And it's weird now because it's not like a normal function. Where these two brackets are here, they've got to be down here. Okay, it's not letting me do it. It's, they've got to be down here. And you'll see why in a minute. So in here we're going to create a new action listener. So it listens for any actions it can hear. So it's say if we click it, that action listener is going to pick up on it and activate and then we're going to add our two brackets right there. So, this bracket we can put up like so. So we're getting there now slowly. So P, the action event listener. So it wants us to add event action listener because it doesn't know where it is. So add that up there. And we're halfway there now. We're getting there much faster. Don't worry about this. That's just because it's empty at the moment. So, we've now got it to listen out for any actions what happens. Next one is to basically say, what run this function if an action happens. So you can't just put it like, say, delete or whatever. You have to put it inside another function. So we're going to type in here, public void. And it's going to be public because then we could say go p dot action performed or whatever. And then we can access it, maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. Void is going to be because it's not returning any value. It's just going to be, it runs it once, that's it, kind of thing. So public void, and we're going to call it action perform, because that's the Java standard for it. Action perform, and we're going to set it to not an action listener this time, because it's listened, it's found the event happening, so we're going to store the actual action event. 
So we're going to type action event as a type of it, and we're just going to call it um, event. And then put your brackets on, so it's getting much easier now. So, when it comes down here, this is still throwing an error, but we'll fix it in a minute. So, it's saying, when it finds an action, store this action and run. So, we're going to add action event, because it's wanting us to add it to the import. Boom. Simple, right? Now, that error's gone too. Easy. So, you're going to get an error here. It's saying, add circle sign, A sign, whatever you call it, override annotation. And all this means is, above this, we're going to type, at sign, override. And the reason you need to do this is because all buttons, by default, have this on click event or action perform. So override basically says, ignore that one, you have to do this one now. That simple. So in here is what you put whatever happens when you click it. So what do we do when we click it? We delete it, we revalidate, and then we fix the bug what we have. So to delete it, just like we said, add P, we go remove P. That's it. Then we revalidate it. And you've done. That will delete the P successfully. But there'll be a glitch. And I really hope it glitches now. So remember, it's a weird way it's done it. But just remember the brackets in the right place. You don't need to try to do it. The reason I've memorized it off by heart is because I've had to do it a lot of times at college. So I kind of know what I have to do with it. But it's one of those things you can just explain, but you know how to use it perfectly. It's one of those. So, if I were to run it, you'd see, check the time, 11 minutes, yes. So, we click Tamagotchi. So, when we click it loads of times, oh no, I have to pee. So, when we click it, yes, it glitched. That's just what I wanted. You'll see why. So, you see, we've clicked it, but it's not crashed. It looks like it's crashed, but I can click other things. But if I click it again, nothing happens. It's stuck there. And you can see it's kind of, if I zoom in, oh, there we go. It repainted now. There's the keyword. Can you see it? Repaint. So it comes in two ways. Add adds it to a list saying, here's your list. But to save on processing power, it doesn't constantly go, check, 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 check this list. You need to revalidate it, which adds it to it. But as you can see there, I can't zoom in because it will get rid of it. In fact, I'll click it, zoom in, and then click it those times. You can see right there underneath it, it was missing. That's because it adds it to it, revalidate, tells it where to put it, but it doesn't finish repainting. It does a quick job of it. So it goes down saying, put it at this location. But it's not quick enough, if you understand. We need to tell it to basically say, spend some time, make it look nice, put it where it needs to be. Really simple again. Just below, wherever you type revalidate, type repaint. If you actually specified your panel, um, you can literally put, I don't know, panel dot repaint. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But it'll come down, repaint it, repaint it, and it'll have no glitches whatsoever. It'll be brilliant. And then, we will do one more thing. Submit, tell I got you. Click, 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 click. Perfect, click it, gone. Let's do it again. Yay, we can clean up our own P. And it's completely gone. So, really simple, right? Uh, that's it. I Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Thumbs up if you did. I'm going to try and keep doing more Java tutorials, but I wouldn't... Uh, uh, I'll just do more Java tutorials. It's not my favourite language, that's the reason. If you watch my C Sharp tutorial, you'll see how enthusiastic I am about it. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I bid you farewell.